Well, as I said uh, earlier on, that the uh, it did seem uh, a long time before we started to fly, and our continuity, the regularity of getting into the air, uh, was not good. Uh, and, and I, with my subsequent flying instructional part of my uh, career, one realizes just how difficult uh, it would have been for so many. Uh, cadets going through Cramwell and, and taking up their pilot training. Um, I in, must confess that I, I uh, had to work very hard and indeed at times struggled with, with uh, reaching the standard. Um, but I do remember my first instructor, uh, who was a master pilot, Jackson, um, and like all, uh, well, a, a, a majority initially of our instructors had all seen, uh, if not Second World War flying experience, um, possibly Korean flying experience um, or combat experience. Uh, Mr. Jackson, uh, he was a master pilot, uh, had lost one ear uh, as a result, uh, but he heard pretty well uh, without a problem. Um, and I then moved on to, uh, because I was having to work pretty hard to survive in the early stages, I then moved on to another master pilot, uh, Mr. Bright, who was known as Daddy Bright, and he had a, a very fatherly uh, manner, which was probably someone who was, at that stage, uh, not desperately confident uh, about uh, the way he, he, that is me, uh, was progressing and coping with the uh, earlier uh, uh, flying lessons and, 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 and so on. Uh, I have to say, I'm glad to say uh, that uh, I suppose I felt I really took off, <laughs> to quote a phrase, um, when we started doing more applied type of flying, instrument flying, um, and then night flying, and then and particularly formation flying. Um, which uh, very much built my confidence. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, and at least I got to the stage where, when it came to which route one was going to go, be it helicopters, be it transport, be it uh, uh, fighters, uh, uh, I was nominated to go fighters. There were actually, in the end, very few who did because there weren't that many spaces. So. I went uh, in the uh, transport uh, route, the multi-engine route, um, but with that knowledge that I had enjoyed and indeed done quite well at the applied flying element uh, of flying. And so it then went on from there. <laughs> so having graduated, what happened then? Uh, well, as I said, I... Um, was uh, chosen to go the multi-engine route uh, and uh, potted off to RAF Oakington uh, where the Vastas and Valettas were based to do uh, the introduction and advanced flying uh, uh, on multi-engines. Uh, I think the <laughs> I enjoyed the flying um, all bit the old Valletta and Farsi, a bit smelly uh, and all that sort of thing. But it was interesting that when one didn't actually fly solo, but one uh, uh, did fly as captain in an aircraft with a fellow student as co-pilot uh, and vice versa, of course. Um, so that was very much a new experience, but of course an essential experience uh, in a, a multi-pilot, if you like, uh, aircraft. Uh, the other uh, thoroughly enjoyable um, uh, thing about being at Oakington, it's on the doorsteps of Cambridge, uh, and uh, long before the days of Silicon Valleys and all that sort of thing, but Cambridge uh, was Cambridge, uh, and that uh, was certainly a way and a place uh, one uh, could keep oneself amused, uh, and so on. The, uh, slight challenge we had at uh, Oakington was uh, we were, of course were fully commissioned we weren't acting pilot officers we were pilot officers but those who had come through the direct entry route as pilots were still acting pilot officers still essentially doing some of their officer training 
Uh, and the station took quite some time, the staff on the station took some, quite some time to adjust uh, to the fact that we were not students in the officer sense. And indeed we did have uh, confrontations, probably too strong a word, but we as a group got together uh, and said, look, well, we, we are hacked off with this, uh, what are we going to do about it? And we decided to, uh, uh, to pick out two or three, or maybe three people as a group, to go and see the senior staff uh, and just reiterate the fact that uh, we didn't appreciate being um, uh, treated entirely as novices, albeit we were still very junior officers. Um, so I think that was the sort of overall experience at, at, at Oakington. Uh, from there, uh, off to the Operation Conversion Unit, uh, OCU, and uh, I was uh, uh, elected to uh, go to uh, um, well, in fact, I'd already got a posting post uh, OCU, which was to go to 215 Squadron uh, in the very early days of setting that squadron up in Singapore. But first to the Operation Conversion Unit uh, for Argus's, um, based at Thorny Island. Um, again, a jolly nice sight uh, if those who, who, who know Thorny Island. Um, detached, as it were, from the local towns and hostelries, but a, a, a very nice uh, island, uh, clearly, uh, but well within reach of the local hostelries, uh, because by that time, uh, quite a number of us had cars so could get around. And one has to admit that those were the days when you could drink and drive, um, So, but I'd like to think we didn't overdo it. Um, so after the, the converting uh, to the Argosy, and of course one was as a co-pilot, um, it was then off to Singapore, uh, and we and a, a number of other colleagues who'd been on, uh, two other colleagues who'd been on 81 entry at, going through Cranwell, uh, were on the squadron too, so there was some linkage uh, there with, with already with friends into clearly a working uh, uh, environment and and as such it, it is with a medium range transport aircraft uh, an operational environment because at that time um, the president of, of, of Indonesia Sukarno uh, was being something of a problem uh, and was confronting it was called confrontation um, with uh, essentially Malaya as it was then um, Singapore was independent, uh, became independent, uh, Malaya was independent, uh, and most of our operations uh, took place in um, what is now, what was then known as Sarawak and North Borneo, uh, now all part of Malaysia. Uh, and that consisted of um, clearly uh, dropping uh, supplies to uh, troops that were often Gurkhas. Um, uh, up country on the, on the border, uh, uh, keeping out um, the Indonesians. Um, and there were one or two exciting occasions there. Um, and often going up into up country strips, uh, not the, with the easiest approach because it was over primary jungle uh, and, of course, quite hilly. Uh, one of the things, two interesting particular things happened uh, in my life there. Um, before um, going out to Singapore, uh, I was seeing family members up in Scotland and a uh, American lady arrived uh, uh, to stay with them when I was staying with them uh, in what <laughs> they strangely called in uh, Connecticut, which is where she came from, an experiment in international living. Well, we got on well together, and um, when I was out, in, eventually out in Singapore, I and a colleague decided to hitchhike uh, to America on American transport aircraft and marine aircraft um, to uh, meet up, and as a result of that, and indeed at that time, uh, uh, got engaged. Uh, so that was, uh, needed to say, a significant uh, event. The other 
major event which, uh, of non-flying that sticks in my mind from that tour uh, was when I, I'd always done uh, exploring as far too, too uh, but venturing one way or the other, usually on a bicycle or on my feet, uh, but uh, not in mountains. And again, a colleague, uh, the one that we hitchhiked to the States together with, um, we climbed Mount Kinabalu, uh, if, if I recall, some 14,000 feet, uh, the highest mountain uh, in Borneo, uh, which was a wonderful experience. Uh, and the weather was splendid, uh, and we do aim to, as it were, get to the top. It's a wonderful vo vo uh, old dead volcano, granite outcrop at the top, and, and just for a sunrise, which is just quite outstanding. You could see so, so far uh, over the jungle uh, and what is known as the Crocker Range of mountains there. So those were the, the, the two of the, as it were, significant events. I suppose the real significance of that Kinabalu uh, hike uh, climb was that uh, it, it took me very much into a, a future career at uh, one stage or another, another of expeditions and uh, expeditioning in uh, other countries and in uh, and, and living in communities of a different culture and religion. Well, as, as I said, my first tour, I remember actually being at Oakington in the mess when obviously one of the members of the staff came in to announce where we were all being posted to. And three of us who had all been on 81 entry at Cranwell um, all were posted in our first tour to 215 Squadron. It's a sort of second phase. The squadron was just re-establishing itself. So we were on the second phase going out to Singapore uh, uh, and 215 was then based at Changi, now uh, Changi International Airport or Singapore's International Airport, uh, which we, of course we were more than uh, pleased about. Um, and it was nice that three of us were going out and of course we very quickly, I think it's fair to say, got involved with a new squadron and all that that uh, implied. Um, just getting the thing to work as a squadron, as a whole, having re-established itself after I forget now how many years it had been presumably since probably not very soon after the war, Second World War. Um, and then other well-established squadrons there, there was a Shackleton squadron uh, and there's the Hastings squadron, so they were well-established uh, and inevitably uh, a certain amount of competition uh, and everyone uh, certainly between the the uh, the the, ha the Hastings and, and the Argus's, both medium range transports, and uh, oh we can do that and you can't do that and so on and so forth. Um, the Argus itself uh, was a very logical aircraft. It uh, as a medium range transport, it really was a, a, a hollowed out brick with a with a a, a tailplane um, which didn't interfere in its structure with the space available uh, and then the crew again sat on that uh, uh, hollowed out brick again so they were not interfering uh, with the space available for, for, for freight or indeed passengers of course. Um, the only trouble with it was that uh, at the request of the army the floor was uh, 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 of the, the, the cargo hold was reinforced to take, and I can't remember the name of the vehicle, but an, uh, an armoured troop carrier, uh, which, best of my knowledge, except presumably in tests, was never actually carried in anger. Uh, so we were laboured with this very heavy floor, which of course uh, affected the performance quite considerably. Um, uh, at the time, we, uh, or say we, the, 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 the Far East Air Force was very much involved uh, as were all the services, with uh, confrontation with Indonesia uh, when uh, the, the leader of their, their government, Sukarno, was trying to uh, extend his influence uh, not only over what was then British Borneo, North Borneo and Sarawak, uh, and no doubt Brunei as well, uh, but also uh, Singapore and, and uh, Malaya as it was then. Uh, and so that we were quite often detached 
to a uh, an airfield, an RAF Labuan, uh, uh, in then North Borneo. Um, you might stay stay there for a week, two weeks, on detachment, supplying the troops up in the jungle. Uh, very often Gurkhas and so on and so forth. Oh, one little incident with the Gurkhas I always remember. Um, they had the little uh, drinking bottles, uh, and uh, I asked. One of the British officers actually serving them. What, what have they got in there? Oh, he said, "Oh, it's rum," <laughs> uh, and they they'd take the odd discreet sip if they were not feeling too well. Perhaps a little air, or get, feeling a little airsick, they'd take a little sip of their their rum, as it turned out to be. Um, I don't know, uh, uh, and we not only uh, uh, did quite a lot of dropping of of equipment. Uh, to those uh, up jungle uh, sites, but uh, also uh, landed at really very short, uh, unsurfaced or unconcreted uh, uh, strips in the jungle. Uh, one that comes to mind is Sandarkan, uh, and there were two or three other ones as well. Um, and also we uh, did drop resupplies onto some of those strips as well, not always just up in uh, over the jungle canopy. Uh, but I got quite a, uh, a love for the jungle, flying over it, uh, and was determined to, go to to get a little bit more involved. And so, a colleague uh, and myself, um, we decided to climb Mount Kinabalu, which is the highest mountain on on the island. I forget just how high it is. I think it's about thirteen and a half thousand feet. Uh, very well, it was an extinct volcano, and very much looks like that. Um, and we had a, a wonderful trail up uh, through the jungle, then to come out in the scrub at the top, and then the the, the actual peak was was a pure rock. Um, and we, uh, I remember getting up. There was a little hut, just at the uh, uh, just on the edge of the scrub before one hit the rock and staying there and night and getting up very, very early in the morning to see the sunrise, which was absolutely wonderful. And, and it, was, it was before the clouds developed as they do later on in the day in that part of the world. And then, as I say, uh, climbing up to the, the, the top of the mountain. Uh, and I think that that, though I'd done venturing of one sort or another before, uh, that really sparked me off to go to, uh, I, how would I say it, I think, countries with a different culture uh, and then a, 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 an interest uh, and uh, to not just tourist through them but to actually live in villages whatever to experience uh, those cultures and very often I rather hope would be isolated and that's the way in due course it did turn out in, in, in uh, one environment or another. Uh, another thing we used to often do we I think we all sort of acquired our first girlfriends uh, or perhaps what one might call more serious girlfriends uh, on that tour, as, as one does. Uh, and we spent a lot of time on, if we had a weekend off, or uh, so of, of going up, up the jungle in Malaya as a, uh, then. Um, and there we had one or two spots which had nice running rivers, uh, the odd rather large snake, uh, which uh, one had one or two confrontations with, uh, fortunately seeing them in time and... Uh, moving away, keeping out of the way, boa constrictors, that sort of thing. Um, never saw any poisonous ones, but there was also a, a, a fairly vicious spider as well, which was something to be avoided. Uh, and it's quite easy to walk through the jungle and run into their net, uh, because it was not slow in coming out, so one had to be fairly sharp in uh, batting it away before it took a nibble at you. Uh, <laughs> But uh, of course, besides enjoying oneself up in the jungle uh, and so on, um, uh, one had the experience of uh, various captains as though we were crewed up. Uh, so one had, as long as no one was ill or whatever, you flew with the same crew. But one then did ex change around, particularly for co pilots, which was quite important, I think, uh, because that meant you had the experience of different approaches to captaincy, different personalities, different ways of running crews, if you like, leading the crew and, uh, and so on and so forth. And, and again, as a, as a fairly naive young pilot at that stage, 
I found it fascinating to see the difference in personalities and the way that various uh, captains went about their job um, and handled uh, various, t uh, various of their crew members who, again, were all, of course, different personalities and different approach to life. And there were certainly those captains one would have preferred not to fly with uh, and those one uh, valued flying with um, because you learnt so much. Uh, and others was, who were just enjoyable to fly with. Uh, and I always remember one of my detachments to La Boine, um was with a, 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 a well, he was a training captain in fact, but he let me do most of the flying, uh, even some of the, the operation aspects of it. And of course one gained a huge amount in confidence uh, and one likes to think ability as well. Uh, it was a tremendous experience. Uh, of doing just that much, um, and it sort of yes. Yeah, so that was a, a, a tremendous experience of, 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 of being able to fly the aircraft operationally uh, so much. Because normally, most captains, when they were we were dropping supplies or what have you, flew themselves. Uh, but to, to do the Virtually the, well, the, virtually the whole trip as though one was an acting captain uh, was, was a tremendous experience. Perhaps if I can go back to my uh, travels again, uh, the other major bit of travelling, uh, uh, I and the uh, same colleague uh, that we, uh, we went to Kinabalu, Mount Kinabalu together, uh, we, before we had come to out to Singapore, we'd both met uh, young ladies um, uh, who were actually American, uh, and we no doubt one Friday evening at DGIF uh, decided we would hitchhike our way uh, to the United States to see the said ladies. Um, if I recall, his was uh, somewhere down in Texas, uh, but uh, my uh, young lady um, uh, was in Connecticut, uh, and we thought how we might go, and we essentially hitched height, having got ourselves to uh, Saigon, as it was then, uh, and, and hitched hiked over on various American service aircraft, uh, largely the Hercules. Uh, and then, uh, once in America, uh, uh, then uh, actually I bought an air ticket up to um, Connecticut, uh, West Hartford, as it happens, um, where the young lady uh, uh, lived. Uh, and indeed, at a obviously short visit, got engaged uh, and came back. And I, did, I didn't think my colleague did, but uh, no, he didn't. But uh, anyhow, that was the sort of the, 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 the big travel. Uh, and having hitched our way uh, over to the States, we hitched our way back again, uh, only to be at, uh, at, I think it was Guam we were going through, uh, having a, a, a real telling off from a, a, a now amusingly called Colonel Slaughter uh, for hitchhiking on their aircraft. Uh, it didn't, in fact, stop us from continuing. Uh, we, we managed to, even more illegally, get ourselves on uh, an aircraft to get back to um, uh, Saigon, uh, where, of course, the Argus's flew through um, on their way to Hong Kong and back. Uh, and, and so we did arrive uh, actually uh, within our leave period uh, uh, back in Singapore. So we didn't get a telling off for being late uh, and absent without leave in that stage. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, besides the, uh, the telling off by Colonel Slaughter, the only other casualty was my uniform hat. Uh, we travelled in uniform. Uh, for obvious reasons, to, to, to make ourselves more convincing, we hoped, uh, to the various American service, flying services. Um, but somewhere along the line, uh, near the end of, the, the, of the, that's, uh, uh, that trip, uh, someone, I think, acquired my uh, number one uniform hat as a souvenir. Uh, so uh, I suppose it wasn't a serious casualty in the, the sense that for what we got in return for that, that trip. But continuing with the, the tour itself, it was, a, it, it was a relatively short tour. I only did about 18 months as a co-pilot. 
uh, and was uh, then uh, uh, offered a, a captaincy. Uh, so it was back to uh, UK uh, to run to do the captain's course, uh, which was at Thorny Island, RF Thorny Island, uh, to then be posted as a very young captain um, to RF Benson, uh, which was uh, had two Argosy squadrons there, uh, and did a full uh, two-year tour as a captain. Um, and, in a sense, relatively routine compared with um, uh, flying over, over the, the, and landing in various jung jungle strips and so on. But on the other hand, uh, some of uh, the sorts of trips one did was fly out to Aden uh, via Mazera. Uh, that was very, very rare indeed, and I only did one trip like that but largely to Germany. Uh, these were, of course, the Cold War days, uh, and, and, and there was, we had a number of bases of one sort or another um, in, uh, in Germany. But there was, uh, though that was, say, traditional uh, transport flying, one also did uh, some uh, exercises, uh, tactical exercises, uh, and often flew up through uh, Macrihanish uh, on the west coast of Scotland. And now Macrihanish uh, and the villages around there were famous for their, uh, well, fishing obviously, but uh, and out of which they produced excellent kippers. And so uh, the, the trick was, if one was flying to Macrihanish, was to put out a, a, a notice on the notice board asking for orders for, for kippers. Uh, which one could duly buy uh, through uh, one of the NCOs who was sort of a local agent, if you like, self-established self agent for selling kippers to passing through air crew. Uh, um, whether he got anything on the side, I wouldn't know. Um, but they were, they were very good kippers and, and one obviously flew them back uh, to, to, to distribute them. But of course the aircrafts when you landed back at Benson, spank like anything. <laughs> These, I can't say fresh kippers, can I? But uh, mature kippers, put it that way. Uh, so that was rather fun. Uh, and so we did, we did various uh, uh, other uh, trips, also to uh, North Africa, to, to uh, Libya. Uh, there were, in those days, uh, El, El Adam uh, was the base. There was also an American base, Wheeler Space. Uh, and Cyprus, of course, uh, and then uh, operating into both Nicosia, which was a joint civil uh, uh, air force base, but, and mainly Akrotiri, which which was the main base there, and of course still is. Right. Here's another of the uh, what turned out to be uh, interesting uh, activity one did uh, at uh, in, at Singapore was uh, some parachuting. Uh, uh, two of us had already been on the same parachute course, uh, a, a proper hard parachute course, if you like, uh, in our younger days before um, going out to Singapore. Uh, and that was out of bal balloons and indeed out of a, a, a Beverly aircraft. Uh, but we had the opportunity to, to do uh, a parachute jump uh, into the sea at Singapore. Uh, 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 and the startling thing about that was, looking out of the, the door before jumping, you could see the sharks swimming around where, where one was going to land. Fortunately, of course, there were a lot of guard boats around, uh, but it was rather startling. But the nice thing, of course, about uh, uh, jumping into the sea uh, or parachuting into the sea is you don't have to worry about the landing. Uh, you just need to be fairly sharp to actually drop out of your parachute harness before you hit the sea uh, so, so that you as it were uh, fall out of the harness into the sea for about 10 feet or so uh, so that you then don't get pulled under or dragged along uh, in a, a slightly embarrassing position <laughs> which wouldn't help your breathing. Okay. Uh,